I want to start out this podcast by saying thank you to all the partners that sow into this ministry to help us do this during the year. I mean, this is week 27 of Your Place in Him Scripture Studying, and we have got partners that faithfully sow into this ministry to help us do this year-round, to be able to strengthen the people that watch and listen to these videos and audio podcast, to strengthen them and help them to know that God loves them just as much as He loves everybody else, and, and He wants them to be strong, strong in their salvation. That's the reason we do this. And if you're a partner of this ministry, thank you for faithfully sowing into this ministry. Now listen, just a few months from now, we are going to go into the Christmas holidays. And we have plans to, to, to exceed the goal that we uh, made last year. You know, we... we uh, ministered over 1,200 different inmates and officers in in this area in in seven different correctional facilities, and oh, what a what a great time that we had just ministering with food and the word in these jails and prisons. We gave we gave pizzas in in some of the jails, and and a lot of the jails we gave ramen noodles. And we found out that the ramen noodles were more uh, received. They li- they liked the ramen ramen noodles more than they did anything else. They'd rather have ramen noodles than pizzas. So we we're 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 uh, moving towards that goal is to just do ever everybody with ramen noodles because they last longer. And and right now, uh, as it stands, we have eight. Uh, different facilities. I had one that's already uh, told us that we're we're going to be able to come in, and I'm just taking for granted that the rest of them we done last year is going to let us do it again. I hadn't I hadn't uh, talked to many of them, but uh, a lot of them are you know they're open for people to come in and and uh, minister to the inmates during Christmas. But we're shooting for 10 different facilities. And we, if we get those 10 facilities, that'll be over 2,000 people, 2,000 inmates and officers that we have the privilege to, to minister to and lift them up and edify them and strength, strengthen them through the truth in God's Word. That's what this is all about, is teaching people the truth about what God said to them, for them, and about them, and and to get hold of the love, the mercy, the grace, and the goodness that God, God so graciously has given each and every man through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross has given them. Now, I said man, but I'm talking about mankind, man, woman, or child. Jesus died for us all, and I thank God that I have the privilege to do what what I'm doing. To, to minister to these inmates. Now listen, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner because we want to, I'm talking about bless these people and help them. A lot of people says, well, them people got in there. Uh, let them get out. Let them work and do what they're supposed to. Yes, that's true. Uh, that is, uh, that's, I agree with you. But the thing of it is, how many times has God forgiven us for our shortcomings? And, and 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 just graciously forgiven us because we asked. You know what? You know, there's a lot of people in this world that are born again that have struggled their entire life because they don't know that God loves them. More and I mean more than they'll ever realize in this world. And and they struggle with that. They they struggle with not knowing. That's the reason we do what we do, is to help them strengthen them, lift them up. So if you're not a partner of this ministry. Pray about becoming a partner. Pray about getting involved in this Christmas pizza and, and uh, uh, ramen noodle giveaway to all these inmates and officers. We want to minister the officers just as much as we want to minister the inmates because they all need it. We all need God's Word. We all need God's truths. So this is week 27 of Your Place in Him Scripture Study. Find out what God is saying to you, for you, and about you in His Word. Today, I want to proclaim to you that you have someone praying for you every day of of, of my life. 
I pray for this world every every day of my life that they'd come to realize and understand the love and the mercy and the grace and the goodness that God has for them. And they would they would count his word so important in their life that, that it just becomes real in their life. Paul wanted this for the Ephesians. Paul wanted the Ephesians to, to know the love of God. And I want to, the world that I live in today to know the truth that the, God loves them and cares for them. That's the reason I do these Ephesians prayers five days a week on this podcast. I pray for you seven days a week. But I do these these prayers on, on this podcast podcast to reinforce your faith in what God has said that that he wants you to know and understand his love. Ephesians 1:15 says, "Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made Him head over all things for the benefit of the church and the church is his body it is made full and complete by christ who fills all things everywhere with himself ephesians three fourteen says when i think of all this i fall to my knees and pray to the father the creator of everything in heaven and on earth I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
at the opportunities that that God has has opened doors and let us be be a part of people's lives. Talking about religion now, we're still talking about religion, but. Uh, my my wife and and some of our uh, we had some board members. They're not board members now, but they're really close friends. And 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 they for a while, long time after we uh, come out of the hospital, and my wife told what I would do in the in the hospital while I was in there. They they just they just you know they find it amusing. But uh, every person that walked into the into the room where I was at, the nurses and things, I'd ask them, are you a Christian? And I had one lady ask me or, or tell me, she said, I don't like to uh, talk about religion, and I don't feel like it's, it's, it's good for, to, for religion to be in part of this job. I said, well, I'm not wanting to talk about religion. I'm not religious, I said, I want to know, is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? And and it, she she finally opened up and, and understood what I was saying. I wasn't trying to get her to go to church or anything else. I just wanted to know if Jesus was her Lord. And Missy taught, tells that story, and, and uh, not that story, but tells the story of me asking everybody. And she, they, her, her and Ken Brummick think it's really fun, funny. They'll say, are you a Christian? Because I couldn't speak plainly. I, I had basically lost my ability to speak, but I'd done everything I knew to do to make sure that I was trying to help someone, if they've never been born again, to be born again. And that that to choose Jesus Christ, to choose Him, is the most important thing that we'll ever do in our lifetime on this planet. To make Jesus Christ Lord of our lives is the most important thing that we'll ever do. You say, well, you've kind of got off off track here. No, I haven't. Jesus said it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man comes to the Father except by me. Listen to me today. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He, he, is, he is the truth in written form which is the Word of God. Remember what the Bible says? The Bible says that uh, the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. That's Christ. And, and, and God has made it possible for every human being on this planet to have a copy of, of, of Christ, a copy of His Word, a copy of God's Word, so that they can know and understand that He's there for them and they can be saved. All they have to do is make him Lord. It's so easy. Sal- uh, religion makes salvation all, almost impossible for a lot of people. I heard a, a guy tell this one time. He said the majority of people in mental institutions right now have, have this crazy uh, idea that they've done something so bad in their life that God has forsaken them. And that is such a lie. That is such a lie. I don't want anyone ever thinking that they are beyond help from God. I, I don't want to. I don't want anybody thinking that. Uh, the other day, here just a few weeks ago, me and a good friend of mine, Jeff Griggs, was at a, the local jail about an hour from here, and uh, there was an inmate wanted to talk to me, and he and I went out and got him out of the 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 pod and brought him out to the rec yard and, and sat down and talked to him and and he said he said there was a preacher that told him he said I I'm I'm really in a bad way he said I'm hungry he said this place you know talking about the food and it's it's not great but I'm gonna tell you something the food in that place is a lot better than a lot of places I've been in or been yeah been in and in, and ministered but uh. He said that preacher told him, said, well, maybe you just need to eat out of the hog trough for a little longer. And I uh, made Jeff mad. <laughs> I mean, it did. He said, boy, that ticked me off. I said, well, I said, people don't realize what they say, and they don't. They don't. They don't realize that, that God is so kind and gentle, and human beings, most for the most part, aren't. And you, you may tell you when people start seeing God in you, when you can start showing his love 
that, that has been shed abroad into every person on this planet's heart that has been made Jesus Lord. And God's Spirit dwells in God's children. And His love is there. All we have to do is choose to give it away. Choose to receive it for ourselves first and foremost, but then uh, choose to give it away and teach people what God has done in your life, what Jesus Christ done for you. So that's the question I want to ask you today. Have you chosen Him? Have you made Jesus Lord? God loves you and wants more than anything in the world to save you if you've never been born again. I'm not here to try to make you doubt, but I want you to assure, be assured that God's Word, what it says is true and you can count on it. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It don't say you might be if you're good enough. It says if you'll confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Won't you do that today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart, into your life, and save you? It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, Confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart, into your life, and save you? He will. He wants to. But it's your decision. All you have to do is say, Jesus, you are my Lord. I proclaim you as Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead to justify me. I receive that justification. I receive you as Lord and Savior today. Thank you, Father. Oh, I thank God for that, that, the ease of being able to be born again and be, be transformed and put into the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, which is the way, the truth, and the life. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, listen. It's it's quickly going to Christmas is going to be here before you know it. And I want to urge you to sow into our Christmas program to help us minister to the over 2000 inmates that, that, that if we get all these jails the way we're supposed to. And I'm just believing that all things, everything works out and we get the 10 jails that we've been believing for and and and, and see the the thousands of inmates and officers that we get to minister to during Christmas. If you've not sown into this into this uh, mission for this Christmas holiday, pray about it. Pray about giving to this ministry to help us to give the the, the inmates and the officers of these ten different facilities, give them just a, a little bit of God's love to go in there and show them. And, and love on them and help them. They need help. All of them do. And it all comes through truth in God's word, through God's love, and us going in there and, and showing them God's love by just a little gift and, and telling them how much we care, how much God cares. So if you're not a partner of this ministry, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do. So into this, this mission that he has set us out here on to show the world, to teach the world who they are in Christ Jesus, their Lord and Savior, or who they can be if they're not born again. Pray about that today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.